okay guys so welcome back in this uh, this is again a continuation of the previous lecture mcqs number 21 to 30 may june 2010 paper 1 variant 1 as chemistry 9701 okay so let's start out from mcq number 21 when heated with chlorine, the hydrocarbon 2,2-dimethylbutane undergoes free radical substitution reaction. In the propagation step, free radical is formed. Okay, how many different forms of this X uh, radical are possible? Okay, so let's look at the all the different possibilities that can arise. Okay, this chlorine free radical, it can remove a hydrogen atom from this methyl group or any of the three methyl group if one hydrogen has been removed it will form HCl right from the entire molecule so if it attacks any of the three methyl groups it will form the same radical all right so this is one possibility by removing hydrogen from any of these three methyl groups then the second possibility is that if it attacks this carbon atom over here and removes a hydrogen from the second carbon over here it will form a different a second form of uh, X radical that has a hydrogen atom removed from this second from this carbon atom over here and then the third possibility can be the terminal carbon atom as well if a hydrogen atom has been removed from this carbon atom it will form a third different form of radical so see three different forms of radicals are possible right now let's look uh, look at the second mcq 22nd mcq what will uh, react differently with two isomeric alcohols and uh, this and that all right we have two alcohols which of these reagents will react differently all right so if we talk about sodium so sodium will react with both of them to form uh, salt of sodium and hydrogen gas so sodium will react similarly with them what about pcl uh, phosphorus pentachloride meaning pcl5 pcl5 will chlorinate both the alcohols and remove the oh groups from both of them and add a chlorine atom to them so again, C cannot be the answer. What about concentrated sulfuric acid? Concentrated sulfuric acid, let's see. For this, we'll have to draw out their structures. Let's draw, the, draw them one by one to see if dehydration is possible. All right, over here in this MCQ, sorry, in this uh, structure up here, we have three methyl groups and a CH2OH attached to the carbon atom. All right. So, and the first uh, isomer is a carbon atom having two methyl groups, then a CH2, then again a CH2, and then in the end it will have an OH group. All right, so we have our two isomeric alcohols. Now, what will be its effect? Uh, oh, sorry. There is no OH group over here. There is a hydrogen in here. All right. So what will be the effect of concentrated sulfuric acid on both of them? What concentrated sulfuric acid does is that it acts as a dehydrating agent. And the rule for dehydration is that the carbon atom that contains the OH group, the OH group from that carbon atom is removed and the adjacent carbon atom, it, it loses one of its hydrogen atoms. Okay. If I were to draw them out, uh, in the fully displayed form, if I were to draw the two hydrogens that it has in the displayed form, oh sorry, not this one, the adjacent carbon atom, the adjacent, the carbon atom that is adjacent to the one having the OH group attached, if you look at that carbon atom, it has two hydrogen atoms as well. One of these hydrogen atoms from the adjacent carbon atom will also be removed along with the OH group. Okay, one of these will remove, will be removed and both of them will collectively form a water molecule okay this is a dehydration reaction and a double bond forms in between them forming an alkene a double bond forms over here and an alkene is formed all right this OH and H are removed and alkene is formed but what about this uh, other isomer do we have a hydrogen atom on the adjacent carbon atom let's see we will the H2SO4 will try removing this OH group but where will it remove the hydrogen from? This adjacent carbon atom does not have hydrogens to it. No protons are present. If no protons are present, this means that this cannot be dehydrated. So yes, concentrated sulfuric acid should be the answer. 
it will react differently with both the alcohols one will get dehydrated whereas the other one will not so b should be the correct answer for mcq number 22 let's move on to the next mcq 23 which reagent will give similar results with both butanone and butanal okay butanone is a ketone as given by its uh, last uh, name suffix and butanal is an aldehyde okay this is an aldehyde and a ketone combination meaning they are both collectively called the carbonyl compounds and from theory we know that 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine this is actually the full name of 2,4 dnph from theory we know that 2,4 dnph it reacts with carbonyl compounds to form a yellow or an orange ppt yellow or an orange precipitate is formed in this case so 2,4 dnph is the correct answer because it can react with the carbonyl compounds it is a test used for carbonyl compounds so d is the correct answer what is formed when propanone is refluxed with sodium borohydride sodium borohydride guys this is a reducing agent and ketone this is a ketone as uh, indicated by its suffix all right now propanone and sodium borohydride let's draw out the structure okay what's the uh, ketones are reduced to secondary alcohols okay they are reduced to secondary alcohols by sodium borohydride because sodium borohydride is a reducing agent and so in this case this ketone the carbonyl group will just get converted into an oh group and this carbon will get a hydrogen and this is a secondary alcohol that we get all right why is this secondary because the carbon to which the oh is bonded is directly bonded to two other carbon atoms and now this group that we got its name will be propan to all because the oh group the functional group is on the second carbon propan to all is its name 24 it's c what about 25 which compound is a product of hydrolysis of this compound by boiling with sodium hydroxide okay this is actually an example of alkaline hydrolysis okay when we boil anything any compound with alkaline sodium hydro with sodium hydroxide aqueous uh, this is actually if you look at it carefully there is an ester linkage present in there the co2 it represents an ester linkage okay and if i were to draw it out this is how it will look like c3h7 and ch3 now in hydrolysis of esters the ester linkage breaks the carbon oxygen bond breaks and the molecule on the left hand side it forms a carboxylic acid and the molecule on the right hand side it forms the alcohol now let's draw out their car substituent carboxylic acids and alcohols okay we'll get ch3 c double bond o oh from the left hand side and we'll get c3 h7 oh from the right hand side okay this is the alcohol propanol and this is ethanoic acid that we get but guys don't forget this was a reaction with an alkali with sodium hydroxide acid base reaction will also occur and this h group will be removed and the sodium salt of carboxylic acid will form sodium uh, ethanoate will form and so okay product of hydrolysis on boiling with aqueous which compound is a product of hydrolysis uh, uh, with of boiling with this compound okay so c3h7oh and ch3 okay guys now this is a, the examiner has tried to trick you by giving you a salt of sodium but if you look at it carefully this is actually a salt of butano butanoic acid because it contains four carbon atoms but we got a salt of two carbon acid so this is not the answer okay if you look at the we have we don't have a four carbon acid again okay b can be the correct option because we did get c3h7oh this three carbon alcohol was one of the products propanol was one of the products so c sorry b is the correct answer after 25 we go on to the next mcq 26 all right now in this mcq uh, the question says that in many countries plastic waste is collected separately and sorted some of this is incinerated to provide heat for power stations why is uh, polyvinyl chloride pvc removed from any waste that is being incinerated okay guys if we uh, recall the structure of pvc pvc had a structure in which each monomer had a chlorine atom attached to it okay and each chlorine atom if is attached this is the uh, pvc this is a polymer all right so if we uh, 
uh, burn it if it's burned okay why do we need to remove any waste product okay it destroys the ozone layer well guys for uh, ozone layer destruction we need cfc's remember chlorofluorocarbons are needed but in this compound we only have a chlorine atom so a cannot be the answer what about b all right in b it does not burn easily well uh, that's not the reason for removing this okay burning is not the reason for removing uh, this uh, compound all right it is easily biodegradable actually no it's not biodegradable because it's a covalent compound the covalent bonds are very strong if when you break them its combustion products are harmful yes this can be a correct answer because if we combust it we'll get hydrogen chloride gas and hydrogen chloride gas is a harmful gas for the environment and for us as well so d is the correct answer hcl is acidic gas and can cause many problems all right so it's a toxic gas basically so yeah delta is the correct answer for 26 then moving on to 27 polymerization of 11 dichloroethene produces a dense high melting point substance that does not allow gases to pass through it is used as a cling wrapping okay which sequence uh, appears in a short length of the polymer chain all right so if we can, they are basically asking us the uh, 11 dichloroethene let's try drawing it out first ethene means two carbon atoms ene means it's a ethene it's an alkene and 11 dichloro would mean two chlorine atoms are there sorry one one dichloro one one dichloro means that both the chlorine atoms are on the same carbon atom okay so this is a compound that we have okay now they are asking us which is going to be the uh, short repeat unit or short a uh, short length of the polymer chain okay so if we make a polymer of this compound it's obviously going to be an addition polymer because this is an alkene and this unit this repeat unit will keep on Uh, repeating it again and again all right in the small section so if we write it down in this condensed formula form so it's going to be ch2 cl2 and it this ch2 cl2 will keep on repeating so now let's see which one of them uh, it matches this option that we have all right so if we look at the first option it's ch2 uh, with uh, a carbon and ch2 ccl2 sorry uh, there is a carbon atom i missed out the carbon atom it's ccl2 okay it's c and then cl2 because this carbon atom is the one to which these two hydrogen chlorine atoms are bonded okay ch2 ccl2 all right ch2 ccl2 is correct then ch2 ccl2 okay then again ch2 ccl2 yes a is the correct answer because this is our monomer being repeated again and again now let's move on to the next mcq 28 when an isomer y of molecular formula okay this is a molecular formula it undergoes hydrolysis hydrolysis means either reaction in aqueous alkali all right so basically we added the oh negative ions from the alkali to form this alcohol okay nucleophilic substitution reaction occurred because this was your alkyl halide and alkyl halide reacted with the alkali forming this alcohol the rate of reaction is found to be unaffected by changes in the concentration of the oh negative ions present okay what is most likely the molecular formula of y all right guys what does this indicate basically this is a nucleophilic substitution reaction and nucleophilic substitution reaction are of two types it's either sn2 or sn1 all right what do the uh, these one and two represent these one and two it actually tells us the number of reactants on which the rate of the reaction is dependent sn1 tells us that only one only one uh, only one reactant affects the rate where concentration of only one reactant affects the rate whereas sn2 tells us that the concentration of both the reactants will affect the rate sn2 is shown by primary alkyl halides whereas sn1 is shown by tertiary alkyl halides and and, uh, and secondary alkyl halides can undergo both right so what is most likely the molecular formula of y this uh, the question says that the rate of reaction is found to be unaffected by changes in oh negative ion concentration changes in oh negative ion concentration would mean that this is actually a tertiary alkyl halide undergoing sn1 this is actually an sn1 reaction we don't know about tertiary but uh, it can be secondary but it is actually a sn1 reaction because the concentration of one of the reactants is not affecting the rate now let's look at its molecular formula first one cannot be the answer because it's a primary alkyl halide what about b okay b is a secondary alkyl halide can be a possible answer but 
Uh, okay, it can be a possible answer. What about C and what about D? All right, D is a tertiary alkyl halide. Okay, B and D, if there is a tie in between them. Okay, B is a secondary alkyl halide. It can undergo both the reactions. But if we look at option D, D will definitely undergo only SN1 reaction because it is a tertiary alkyl halide. If I draw out its structure, this is how it looks like. And it's called a tertiary alkyl halide because the carbon to which the bromine atom is attached, the carbon to which the halogen is attached, is directly bonded to three other carbon atoms. All right, so option D is correct answer. This is the best choice. B can be the answer, but it can undergo both prime uh, SN1 and SN2 reactions. So D is the best option that we have. Now let's look at uh, MCQ number 29, which isomer forms three alkenes on dehydration. All right, so which of these isomers can form three alkenes on dehydration? All right, so let's look at them one by one. The first one, butan one all. Okay, butan one all would mean a four carbon alcohol with a OH group attached at the first carbon, CH2OH. All right, in this compound, if we remove the OH group from the first carbon atom over here, the hydrogen atom must be removed from this second carbon atom and then a double bond will form over here and this is the only alkene that we get and that's it. This will give us only one product. What about butan 2 all? Okay, let's look at butan 2 all. Okay, they're asking us three alkenes, right? So let's look at butan 2 all now. Okay, CH3, CH2 and then CH2, sorry, not the CH2 over here now. The second carbon has the OH group and then a terminal uh, methyl group, all right. Now, First of all, if this compound undergoes dehydration, the OH group must be removed from the carbon atom and then the hydrogen atom must be removed from the carbon atom that is adjacent to this carbon atom. Can be from the left carbon atom on the left or can be from the carbon atom on the right hand side. Okay, if it is from the carbon atom on the right hand side, we are uh, going to get this product. So this is one of the products and if it is from the carbon atom on the left hand side, then the product that we get will look something like this. Just a moment, I'll draw it out. Then we'll get but 2 in. All right, but 2 in is our product then. But if we look at it carefully, but 2 in can also show geometrical isomerism. It can also show cis trans isomerism. There can be a cis but 2 in and a trans but 2 in as well. So this will actually give us two different isomers. And one isomer is over here. So one plus two, we get three isomers from option B. Right? So option B is correct. Of 29. Now let's move on to the last MCQ. 30. Which compound exhibits both cis trans and optical isomerism? All right. So the actually they are asking us which of them uh, it shows stereoisomerism. All right. So let's look at them. Condition for cis trans. We'll need a double bond, and for optical, we'll need a chiral center. Okay. This first uh, option A. It can show. Uh, it can show cis trans isomerism, but it cannot show optical isomerism because there is no chiral center. Chiral center is that carbon atom which must have four different atoms or groups of atoms attached to it. Option B, again, uh, okay, option B can show optical isomerism because there is a chiral carbon over here, but this double bond cannot show cis trans because this double bonded carbon atom is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. If we look at option C, again, this can show cis trans isomerism, but cannot show. Uh, uh, optical isomerism because we don't have a chiral carbon in here as well. Option D, okay, let's look at option D. All right, this carbon atom is chiral because it contains four different groups of atoms uh, attached to it. And this uh, double bond can also show cis trans isomerism because each of the double bonded carbon atom is directly bonded to two different groups of atoms. So D is correct answer. Right, so this uh, completes the next 10 MCQs. All right, so the next 10 MCQs are given in the next lecture, the link to which has been given in the description. Please do check that out. Thank you so much.